Chairman. That's, that is perfect. Please restart the clock. Thank you. Some Some is recognized. May, some may disagree with that. I want to thank the gentleman from North Carolina for giving me his microphone. Mr. Jarvis, in October of 2011, Occupy protesters descended upon McPherson Square and they decided to stay. Despite the clear language of the law, these protesters camped at McPherson Square with the definition of camping being sleeping or preparing to sleep for a hundred days. They camped in violation of the law and you did not make a single solitary arrest for camping. So Congress decided to have a hearing and ask you why you were not enforcing the law. And you told us, Mr. Jarvis, that you had a great deal of discretion in how and when to enforce the law. You told us that you were, after a hundred days of not enforcing the plain language of the statute, working with protesters to, quote, gain compliance, whatever the hell that means, with the law and what you called, quote, a measured and reasoned approach. Uh, by the way, Mr. Jarvis, those were your words, uh, not mine. So the law says no camping, but the protesters camped anyway, and you didn't do anything in terms of arrest or citations for over 100 days. So Mr. Jarvis, I want you to fast forward two years. Parks are closing, access to monuments is restricted, even access for those who helped build the monument in the first place. You didn't wait 100 days to enforce the law, Mr. Jarvis, with veterans who wanted to see their monument. You didn't work to gain compliance. Veterans weren't greeted with a measured and reasoned response, Mr. Jarvis. They were greeted with barricades on the very first day. Furthermore, they could not exercise their First Amendment rights to walk to a monument that they helped build, but yet some of our colleagues were allowed to exercise their First Amendment right to protest whatever it was they were protesting on the National Mall. So I'm going to read something to you, Mr. Jarvis, and I want you to ask me if you recognize who said this. Because of the lapse in funding, you are having to deliver difficult news to our visitors and partners. The functions we must perform under a shutdown are not the reasons any of us join the National Park Service, but they are the duties we are required to perform by law and regulation. Do you know who said that, Mr. Jarvis? I believe I said that. You're right, you did. So can you tell me why you would not enforce the law at McPherson Square, but yet you greeted veterans with barricades on the very first day? What regulation can you cite to me that required you, by law, to erect barricades? The contingency plan that was approved on September 27th for the National Park System is in compliance with the Anti-Deficiency Act. I I'm looking for a criminal, statute, Mr. Statute Jarvis. I'm looking for, Act. I am looking for a citation to the Code of Federal Regulation or the, or, or, or the U.S. Code for why you erected barricades. We've established you did not enforce the law for 100 days for protesters. Agreed? You agree with me? You did not issue a single citation for camping, right? I believe that is correct. Either it is or it didn't. Is it? Not one single citation for camping. Um, I do not remember exactly. Well, your previous testimony was that you had not issued a single citation for camping despite 100 days of noncompliance. That was two years ago. Okay. Well, I, I can cite you the regulation that you did not follow two years ago. Can you cite me the regulation that required you to erect barricades to prevent veterans from accessing a monument that they built? I can cite the Anti-Deficiency Act. Can you cite a regulation that required you to erect barricades? Mr. Jarvis, that is not a complex question. The Anti-Deficiency Act requires that I reduce all employees down to only those that are necessary for life and property that required the closure of all 401 national parks. Mr. Jarvis, why did you fail to enforce the plain language of a statute for 100 days for protesters, and yet on the very first day you denied access to a monument that veterans helped build? On the very first day of the closure, I implemented a closure order for all 401 national parks in compliance with the Anti-Deficiency Act, and immediately, 
immediately that day uh, also included as a part of that uh, order um, that First Amendment activities would be permitted on the National Mall. Do you consider it First Amendment activity to walk to a monument that you helped build? Or is it only just smoking pot at McPherson Square? The First Amendment activities, we um, are content neutral on First Amendment in the, on the National Mall. That wasn't my question. Do you consider it to be an exercise of your First Amendment right to a walk to a monument that you helped build? If an individual declares they are there for their to exercise their First Amendment activity, who are they to declare it to? The gentleman's time has expired. Could, could, could I ask the final question? Who were they to declare it to? To a the barricade? ranger on the site. On the National Mall, any group under 25 does not need a permit to exercise their First Amendment. And we set up the policy to allow our veterans in, including all of the honor flights under First Amendment. So they were not, not denied access. Mr. Chairman, I want the record to reflect that no statute or code of the federal regulation was cited I justify the erection the, of the, the, rec the record will indicate that, Mr. Director.